I'm Natasha Como. I'm an assistant restoration ecologist with the Tulalip Tribes Natural Resources Department, and I am a project manager at the Hubbard Zettel Dam restoration site. Prior to this restoration at this site, there was an earthen dam and uh, essentially an impoundment of water and sediment. There was a pond that was used long time ago for watering uh, the fields and also for uh, drawing water for horses and such. This pond was no longer used in such manner by the current owners. It was not functional, it was filled with sediment and uh, on the upstream there was a pond and on the downstream of the dam there was about three to four foot drop of water from the culvert which means on the outlet the fish would have to jump anywhere between two to four feet to be able to pass through to the other side of the dam. This made this culvert functionally impassable. The Duleil Tribes Natural Resources Restoration Program is heavily invested in removing uh, fish barriers all along the Snoqualmie and the Skykomish rivers because they are within the Tulalip Tribes usual and accustomed areas. With, this means that we are seeking to open up habitat all throughout the Snohomish Basin and we can achieve our goals with increasing the amount of fish available for harvest for everybody, including uh, the Tulalip tribal members. Where the water was flowing would, was going to be our work area, so we had to bypass and, and let the water flow without endangering the fish. We had to exclude all of the fish. And every dam has uh, sediment impounded behind it, which means we had to remove all of the sediment with, instead of flushing it down rivers. Once we created the channel itself, we were able to open up the dam and remove that sediment that was an actual uh, fill sediment that have been actually borrowed from the surrounding areas and we had to open up that area, put in abutments for the actual bridge, uh, stabilize them. We brought a prefabricated 40-foot bridge. We had to create natural conditions in the channel which meant all of these complexities of meandering, flood benches, logs, different type of logs, rocks, to create complexity and areas where fish wants to hide and want to be in. This is a very small basin compared to other basins, but these small basins that are proximal to the main stem of the bigger rivers are very, very important for the rearing habitat where the smaller fry, they provide refugia, they provide uh, shelter for them to go to. It provides them a refuge from predators, uh, areas that they can live and thrive, and uh, this is a very healthy stream that has very nice substrate in it. We are hoping that we can provide even spawning habitat within uh, a couple of years from now. Removing the barrier is only the first step, creating a healthy habitat by erosion control, bank stabilization, and riparian buffer is the second step. Then adaptive management is the third step. So we'll see how this channel functions one, two, five years from now, and then we can come back and see how we can improve it. It will give the fish a little bit more fighting chance so they can survive the tumultuous beginning of their life or to provide any type of uh, refuge for them during flood events and during um, high storm events that are way more likely to happen with climate change and extreme weather events that are coming in our future. So every mile counts.